Hi everyone, how are you? Um, today I'm going to share with you about mild peer management. It's a joke. Okay, let's have a look what's mean by mild peer is a joke. Okay, some disclosure for myself. And let's have a look. So why so serious about mild peer? We, a lot of people think mild peer is a joke. Okay, so we can see the changing from a monkey or apes down up to where we are now. So with a lot of changes in our life and also myopia as well. So myopia management. So how do we see myopia man management in our practice, in our daily life as an optometrist? Is it a market trend or professional responsibility and other boring things? I don't believe it. I don't have resources to do it. Or I don't have time. Or I'm too busy. Or, oh, okay, my peer man management is not my cup of tea. So I don't want to have anything to do with it. So a lot of things that make us think about why my peer management is nothing related to us. A lot of things in our lives. Is it because of our comfort zones with what we're doing? Or are we really happy about what we're doing? We just basically um, don't want to do anything different. So we know this is a comfort zone. So we can see somewhere we feel really safe, we're in control, and when we want to do something different, we have to go for the fear zone, and then we have the learning zone, and then the growth zone. So there are a lot of things that we will see how we change uh, from our professional lives, especially in this specialty area called mild peer uh, management. So comfort zone, okay. So we think about ophthalmic lenses. So very easy to dispense, uh, just single vision lenses or multifocal lenses, or we just do it because we're easy, simple. Myopia, we just give prescriptions, easy. So maybe in the consultation room, mm, I don't really want to waste the time too much in talking to the parents about myopia management and stuff because it costs so much time. Because some people may say, I don't want to explain too much, okay, because it's hard, so they don't want it. And maybe during the eye examination time, okay, either eye examination is okay, Okay, so we don't have to worry too much. Um, or if I don't want to do it, I just refer because I feel comfortable, we just refer. Or research, because a lot of research out already about myopia management and myopia things that we can do. Maybe there's still a lot of people who don't believe this is true. Maybe what you think about, a lot of people think about is believe is the earth is still flat, it's not round. Okay, there's still a lot of people outside that believe the world is still flat. You believe it or just let it be, as it is. So a lot of things that we quite comfortable in our comfort zone. So in the myopia management, we have the missions, what we want to do. So missions, we want to prevent the retinal and ocular health complications due to the axial elongations and high myopia. And we have the visions when we do myopia management. We want to change by 2050 the myopia forecast from a lot of research center like BHVI, um, about 50%. We want to change it to 40. So we still got about 30 years to do. I believe what we can do together is to change this 50% of the population to 40. So let's have a look. Um, one, some, one, case, uh, one of the cases I'm going to share with you. A seven years old boy, okay? He came into my practice in the, um, October 2018, the fir first examinations. Okay, the parents' mum uh, is minus six, father's minus 350, told by our teachers about the sons um, is can't see clean the class. And the parents find it, uh, they don't believe it. But the mother uh, was my patient, uh, she's my awful care patient for about well, 16 years. So, um, so that's we try to help the mom and the kids. And then they come back two months later, second eye examinations. So they're concerned the prescription change, increase in future retinal issue. And at the time we uh, replied the mouse smart for them. So during this 18 months, so we have the regular eye examination, we, we can see from the here is the prescription changing from the right eye, 175 sphere, the last 150, up about 150 on the right eye, and 075 for the left with a bit still increase. One thing we have to look into is the axial length changes. So for the first 12 months, it's about 0.3, 
upon two five on the right and about 0.34 on the left, okay, for 12 months. But have a look in the last six months, a big change to three, neither 0.35 on the left and the 0.3 on the, uh, on the right as well. Probably something we have to consider looking to excelling is what had happened in the last two, three months because of the COVID-19, a lot of kids stay indoor and also a lot of uh, internet uh, online learning. And when we have the Mao Peer Master, it's a technology thing we had, and we show the parents about the excellent changes and also the VHVI chart about the big data, and the parents can visualize the right decision they made back in 18 months ago. Because if um, if they look at this chart, if the chart, if the kids is here now, like what well, they start doing nothing, just paying single vision glasses what they will see the kids eye in the future will be really, really, really bad. So you can see that the projecting in the future, his kids are maybe around minus nine, minus 10. So when the parent look at this chart, they knew if they have made the right decision for doing things 18 months ago. So this uh, technology that's on science of data really help us to do a lot of things to show the parents what to do, how we can do things much more effectively. So technology really, really been a big wow in my practice. So for example, in special technology, I try to put it in the front or in my room so people can see it and stand alone and the eye-catching location, the parents would really look, look, look at it and ask me what it is. And if you have some new technology in your practice, try to utilize it and maximize it. Or you think about technology, when you get some new technology in the practice, you have to think about how you can utilize it and maximize it. That's when I have these things in my practice in the last four weeks. So one of the ladies called Lisa Ong, and she said to me, so I really appreciate you invest back into my kids' visual and ocular health. And the second person who gives some feedback to me when he saw the equipment, he said, I just Google it. And whoop, it's not in the market. How can you get it? So parents were really, really surprised and impressed by the technology things we had in how to do things for the kids. And one but the professor from um, hit the kids come and had that Mao peer managed by me. And the wow. And he he's actually from uh, uh, from from the industry as well. Uh, not in the industry. He's from the UNSW. So um, he said, wow, BHBI. He's a big data. Must be very scientific based. So it's a lot of things that we can help us to 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 make ourselves different to other people. And this is one of the young girls with uh, Miss uh, Catherine. And he said he said to me, "Oh, another new toy for me? Is it a balloon again?" <laughs> so the new is a new toys. So what we can see is technology make a big change in the last ten years, especially the cameraman and the drone. So we have to see what we can do, what we have to upgrade ourselves to make ourselves survive and be the best in our industry. So technology actually really bring me a lot of financial benefit because it's like a continuous income, especially in my peer management sector. So number two, it helped me to investigate all the patient needs because we got all the technology available. It really helped me do more things better and better. So number three things is it really helping me to perform the absolute best of my job to the patient. I think this is the expectation from our patients, or maybe even sometimes we call the customer, they're expecting we perform the absolute best to them. So technology really helps us do this. So especially for myself, we do a lot of bio peer management. So with the technology things, it's really helped me feel so touched and by the success in managing the bio peer over the last 22 years. So uh, we have looked at this, that uh, a, a poll done in US, Harris poll, we can see in opticians, which they call optometrist opticians in the US, and eye doctors, ophthalmologists, we can see we are the most respected people in US. So, which have roughly about 70% people who trust us. So we, we have to be th uh, more proactive in advising our patients about what it what would be the best option and options uh, for them to managing myopia, how we can help them to, to manage the myopia in the most effective way. So uh, fortunately, we are not the politician, otherwise we dropped into 20, 27%, so no one trusts us. Okay, less of the case number two, is a young girl, nine years of age. 
So the parents come in and told me in 2018, he, she was a bit hyperopic and last just lead to hyperopic. And now the parents complain about and concern about the kids squinting their eye, not seeing things properly in the school and at home as well. So we have no excellent measurement information because they, um, they had the daughter check the other places. So when we look at her today, um, we can see the excellent 23.61 for nine years old, nine years age of girl with minus one, two, five, one, which is quite strong in terms of the, I mean, quite long in terms of this number, which make us really, really uncomfortable. And the father in the beginning was, but the now the daughter is a mile peak. So after we show them the BHVI, the the, the, pro, the graph by the uh, machines and the software, and the father was just speechless because he's so sad because he found out the daughter's eyes would be, uh, what will in the future would be. So we have to, we also have to look at the axial length and the age because we have to consider different age group have a different axial length matching and also different time frame, the uh, different time frame in terms of the weather season and when the onset of the myopia. And that's just something we have to look into uh, to matching the axial length and age. So for myself, axial length is a risk Take a teller, not take a risk teller. It's telling us how the, uh, the, 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 the retina, the risk that the, that kit uh, will expose in the future. We, we don't want to control it. That's something we want to do together to try to minimize the risk. So once the father see all this number and he asked me what I can help, what I can offer and the best options with scientific evidence. So once we reach that stage, um, something what we as an optometrist, we also, we always have some uh, issue is how we can communicate with the parents, how we can make sure uh, we can, we, 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 we are in control. So that's why I say I'm in control now, because when the parents ask us with, with all this information, they will ask us what is the best options. So we have to consider, we have to think about how we, we can, we can in control in all these situations. So this is the chart we use and show to him and he can see the charts keep going up. That's what he make him worry. So during this time, the parents will consider is how are we going to flatten the curve? That's what he really want to want us to do, what we can offer to them with the technology. Um, with the technology in terms of uh, the, the option we can offer to them, such as contact lenses, glasses, or maybe even atropine. So we, got a, we offer different options to them. So technology really helped those people uh, who are not in the myopia management to get into a comfort zone. I mean, a comfort zone, not where you used to be, a comfort zone that allow us to move into myopia management. And branding, because it's something that we can confidently uh, add into our mild peer management to our practice. So it's some technologies we can really help us to get really get into them more com confidently. And marketing wise is how we can bring this product, uh, our specialty, our mild peer management into be into the marketing wise and how to make us become the leader. A forward thinking eye care practitioner will always look into how to utilize and utilize the technology available to make him become the, the top leader in, the, in, in this specialty area. So science why? Because we know we got a peer review literature based on studies, uh, the, the nomogram which pop up BHVI, we know this is something scientific, which we can really help us to, to do things much more comfortable. So when you look at the patient care, something I'd love to share with you is number of few things we love to do in my practice or in my experience called engagement, number one. So we have to make sure we have the eye and ear attentions. So some things we have to know what you're looking at, what we are listening. So when we're patients care, they want us to have some emotional connections with them so they know that we care about them. And the number two, the endurance. We have to patiently understand their complaint and can they complain because a lot of the time the parents will complain so many things. 
which we think they're wrong, but try to be more, uh, be patient, listen to them without too much judgment. So which they will understand, we know what they talk about. Experience is something really, really important in, in when we're managing our myopic kids and myopia patients. It's a journey of experience in our expertise and also your continuous professional care. So they can experience that you really, really know what you're doing and you put continuous care about them. So expectations. So updating the parents and the patients, okay, from the treatment that you're providing. You keep updating them for what you're doing. So they then met, they would know what they're expecting, what to do. So the last few things I'd like to share with you is in the myopia management, we have to have commitment. We have to have commitment, okay? We have to the engagement. When we do the all, I mean, my peer management, I believe we all will have enjoyment. And from the enjoyment, I believe everyone will have fulfillment for being an optometrist who provide the my peer management. So last one for me, my peer management. Doing something is better than doing nothing. Doing nothing is actually we're doing something. So myopia management, management is not a joke. It's something really, really serious. We have to do it. So the, the people I love to thank uh, for helping me to uh, prepare these uh, presentations. And I love you guys. Enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can email to me. You can see the new email, my email address called gameovermyopia at gmail. Uh, we can share about how we can make things happen in the real life, in our practice together and make us become a proud optometrist. Thank you very much.